Hello, sorry about the lighting. I know the thumbnail picture is weird, but it is four in the morning and the only light I have on is my bedside light because my what? Because my toddler is asleep on the floor. I put her to bed in her bed, but she climbed off onto the floor at some point. Whatever. Um my cat is asleep on my bed. Husband's awake. Anyway, not the point. I'm tired. Can you tell? Um, Dark Archives, a librarian's investigation into the science and history of books bound in human skin. And I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but it's Anthropodermic Bibliopegy, is what she calls it in the book. It's by Megan Rosenblum. I'll this here. Like over here it's glary, but over here it's dark. So there there we go. Um this is really, really good. It when you read the title, it sounds like a creepy morbid book that's not gonna be for everybody. And I guess it kind of is, but also Okay, if you like bookish books, bookish nonfiction, bookish nonfiction written by librarians. Or if you really like um, Caitlin Doty's books, or the one that Mary Roach wrote called Stiff, I would highly recommend this for any of those categories. It's so good. Also, if you're interested in medical history as it pertains to, Well, anatomy, ana anatomical studies, dissection, and just, like, ethics and stuff. I think you would also find this interesting. She is a medical research librarian. Let's see, how is it? A librarian with a research interest in the history of medicine and rare books. So, she has some really interesting viewpoints as well. Um... It is blurbed on the back by Mary Roach and Caitlin Doty. Um, as well as Lindsay Fitzharris, who I've not read, but I have heard her, her book, The Butchering Art, and it sounded really good. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this. I really need to talk about this. This was really, really good, and it's not very long. It looks a bit longer than it is because it has a bunch of notes and stuff in the back. But basically, medical history... sort of books made in people skin I learned a lot and it was really fascinating and it's not as gross as it sounds filled with examples throughout history with context as to their creation yes as well as cultural annotations and connotation yes that so it's really, it, it's really fascinating. Including things like sometimes it made the book more valuable. Yeah, sometimes they would bind the book in people's skin because it made it worth more. And it was largely done between the late 18th to the late 19th century by doctors. But there are other examples and... She doesn't have, like, any proof or anything because she doesn't have access to a lot of those books. But she speculates towards the end that there are a lot of these books in France. But France has weird laws. Like, they have the most strict laws about dead people and parts of dead people, basically. But she said... I mean, for the most part, they just look like regular books. But she did see pictures of some in a book that she found in a library in France that are obviously people, like they have ears or stuff on them, which is very uncommon for these types of books, for anthropodermic books, apparently. Um, and... Thus far, she has not found any books, anthropodermic books, related to, like, having been done by Nazis or by, or that are, like, 
occult type books. They're, like I said, most of them were late 18th to late 19th century doctors, especially like American ones, that were book nerds, basically, and they're like, oh, I have this really cool rare book and this piece of people skin that I saved from a dissection, let me bind it in that because that's rare too. I mean, that sounds weird and it sounds gross to us and it's completely unethical and non-consensual, but at the same time, nerdy doctors from a time period where ethics and consent weren't brought into it who are also book nerds? It makes sense. Academia makes you do weird things. <clears throat> I just realized I'm rambling for five minutes. So you should just go read this because it's really, really good. And I'm going to go to bed now because it's four in the morning. And I've been up since 10 in the morning. And, uh, okay. Um, go read this. It's really, really fascinating. Um, like I said, it's not as gross as it sounds. I gave it four stars. I need to go to bed. Okay. Uh, questions, comments, opinions, let me know down below. Have you read this? Do you want to? I forgot to mention it just came out in October of 2020, so it's quite new. Um, if you have read it, what did you think of it? Did it gross you out? Because it seems, I don't get grossed out by this stuff easy, but it seems to me like it wouldn't be super gross to normal people. Maybe like a little gross. Like it would totally gross out my mother, but also my mother gets grossed out by everything. So I think normal people wouldn't be seriously grossed out by it. It's also four in the morning, so I can't think much at all. But yeah, this was really good. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys next time, hopefully more awake. Bye.